good morning to all of you and thank you prasad for um, the nice introduction well um he mentioned that i was asked to give this talk today for the younger people but earlier i was under the impression that i was supposed to talk on harishchandra's work to a public audience on the afternoon of 11th for the public function so my preparation was of a different kind and uh, only when my plane landed in allahabad i came to know that that i had that misunderstanding and then i had to quickly change lot of things and this is what i have so you will excuse me for shortcomings okay so let me begin now his last physics paper is entering the twilight zone in 1948 and first mathematical paper in lee theory in 1949 had already the dawn of an era of algebraization of representation theory harish chandra underlined the fruitfulness of the universal enveloping algebra this led him to his 1951 paper in the transactions of reals it contains results of lasting importance oh i forgot to say one thing which i intended to say yesterday evening i was looking at the the new posters here and i think my talk should begin and end with a quotation from langlands that uh, <clears throat> it is difficult to communicate the ground of harishchandra's achievements and i am not trying to do so i should repeat it at the end of the talk too so this 1951 paper in the transactions of ams contains research of lasting importance including a general construction of a semi simple lie algebra from first principles with already case by case computations let me stand there and see whether i can talk from here only thing is the remote should work from here the paper also establishes the harishchandra isomorphism which identifies the center of the enveloping algebra with a polynomial algebra it won him the cool prize of the ams harishchandra's approach which looks very simple and natural now was sensational at that time the dinkin diagram of of course arises uh, from a cartan matrix a Harishchandra introduced the infinite dimensional associative algebra UA with generators and relations specified by the Cartan matrix. I must apologize if my if, if this presentation looks like an artificial intelligence enabled uh, text reader. <laughs> It turned out actually from Harishchandra's analysis that the Lie algebra LA inside UA generated by the basic elements has a unique finite dimensional quotient of the simple Lie algebra L that was also noted by Chevalier. This led him to his okay. We are still in the middle of this 1951 paper. I'll oh, what happened? Okay. So in this in this paper Ari Chandra <coughs> that audio icon was supposed to say that some part of some part of my text is already recorded but some part I am just reading so in this paper Harishchandra considered the um, the so called Harishchandra modules for but he considered it for a complex semi simple algebra regarded as 
real sum is simple Lie algebra. Of course, the maximal compact is a compact form, and he was able to prove he proved finiteness theorems that you know, uh, which he later, I mean, this results he later generalized to arbitrary semi simple Lie algebras and uh, real semi simple Lie algebras. And so that has become a topic of great interest. And last week in the uh, workshop, there were elaborate discussions on those. <coughs> the celebrated sub quotient theorem. This remarkable self says that an arbitrary abstract irreducible representation of a semi simple E group can be found inside one of a particular family of explicitly introduce uh, explicitly constructed representations. These representations have been introduced by Gelsfeld and Neumark and also Brugger, uh, who call them the principal series. Since the principal series themselves are constructed quite concretely, and since they have been uh, intensively studied, one might hope that the sub quotient theorem more or less solves the problems of semi simple representation theory. But that's a sweeping statement. Everyone knows that uh, induced representations are, is a topic of great interest being pursued even today, and irreducible representations many many new ways of looking at are constantly being pursued. Some of the most important advances in the subject following Harishandra have amounted to improvements in understanding the structure of principal series, in particular in 1974, R.P. Langmans refined later work of Harishandra to give what is in some sense the classification of irreducible representations in terms of how they sit inside principal series representations. Well, uh, you should not, don't worry if, don't pay much attention to uh, this slide. I'll show you a more professional slide immediately now. Okay, so uh, as I said, uh, let us go to the next slide. But also, I, I don't think. So this this is taken from a paper of, of uh, David Ogden and Brigitte Spey. I'm glad to see both of them in the audience here. So it actually describes very explicitly with a lot of. Uh, objects starting from a parabolic subgroup and a lot of parameters. What the uh, Langlands classification is. When Harishandra was convinced that algebraic methods can reveal no more, he. He took control with analytic methods. The center of the enveloping algebra gave rise to differential operators on orbit spaces of reductive subgroups or subalgebras of equal rank. He exploited them to study invariant eigen distributions and orbital inter. Okay, I think again I'm missing some the audio which is here. I think 
the audio is not working in this then maybe i can no no the, those audio icons i don't know why they are not working let me see i don't want Doesn't matter. I will switch to the. For this slide, at least. No, this. I don't think there is any connection through audio here. Is it possible? Okay, so. let me go to the it took control with analytic methods the central dynamic algebra gave rise to differential operators on all the spaces of reductive subgroups or subalgebras of equal rank he exploited them to study invariant eigen distributions and orbit, orbit, orbital integrals of not quite uh, matrix coefficients but rather short space functions so let me give you uh, a uh, brief idea of what is uh, 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 distribution character for a representation so pi here is a simple representation of g in a hilbert space that means that pi is topologically irreducible and has an infinitesimal character then this operators you take a test function a heated with the operator pi x multiplied by the function fx and integrate over g so that, so this operator is of trace class that is you uh, write the operator as a, a matrix with infinite rows and infinite columns and the sum of all the diagonal elements is absolutely convergent and independent of the orthonormal basis this linear map uh, setting f to trace of pi f is a distribution in the sense of schwarz harishchandra called it the distribution character of pi to distinguish it from the infinitesimal character i showed that it is invariant under inner automorphisms and that it determines pi up to equivalence when pi is unitary moreover it satisfies the differential equations uh, you take an element of the center of the analytic algebra and differentiate the distribution that is scalar multiplication you can evaluate the uh, infinitesimal character at the element of the center and multiply the distribution well in the compact case the uh, you have these group operators group operators on a finite dimensional space take the trace and that defines a function on the group that defines a function on the group and if any function because you have a whole mesh that defines a distribution and is the same distribution the existence of a distribution characters is a major landmark in the theory of infinite dimensional representations of the lead groups all these results were established by harishchandra when still in his 20s but he you know he um people who are very close to him would know that he has this results but he did not announce then and there itself he was always uh, he would uh, for example 
the regularity theorem, he announced the regularity theorem only in the early 60s when he visited France. Well, in fact, he had the proof of the regularity theorem even by around 1958. Well, Harish Chandra tells V. S. Vardarajan in private conversation, at no time was there any doubt in my mind regarding the course I had sorted for myself. My conviction that only by looking at all real semi-simple groups can one discover basic phenomena was never shaken. The idea was to view the characters as invariant eigen distributions on G and use the differential equations they satisfy on G. Recall here that invariant eigen distributions on G or distributions T on G such that T is invariant under inner automorphism coming from G. There exists a homomorphism chi of the center of the enveloping algebra of G into the complex numbers. There is algebra of complex numbers such that when you <coughs> differentiate the distribution by an element of the center, you get scalar multiplication. If T is a distribution character of an irreducible unitary representation of G, then chi is the infinitesimal character of the representation. <coughs> he proved the famous regularity theorem of characters which asserts that T is Ft dx, where Ft is a locally summable function on G, which is analytic on the dense set of regular elements of G. Well, that statement can combines three statements. This gives an IG invariant analytic function on a dense open set. The function Ft on the dense open set is in fact locally summable on all of G, thus giving rise to distribution. And this distribution Ft is in fact T. Well, if, again, I don't have the audio. If phi is a, a function on an appropriate invariant neighborhood U of 0 in the Lie algebra, then uh, we can associate, so phi is a function in the neighborhood of 0, appropriate neighborhood U of 0 on the Lie algebra. But now we can associate a function at the neighborhood of the identity approves in the in the group by that formula. F phi is that function you would associate in the group is given by that formula here using the function phi. But this there is a dual map which takes invariant eigen invariant distributions on G to invariant distributions on U. So invariant distributions on the group to invariant distributions in a neighborhood of zero in the Lie algebra. T going to tau T. For proving the regularity theorem that the character distribution is an analytic function on a dense invariant open set, I shall takes the above mentioned approach in a wider context often referred to as the method of descent. So take a semi-simple element and take the centralizer of that element both in the Lie algebra of G and in the group MA and MA. The method of descent associates to functions phi on, the, on an appropriate MA invariant open neighborhood U of 0 in the Lie algebra MA, a function F phi on an appropriate G invariant neighborhood V of A in the group, a formula similar to what you saw. Once the regularity theorem was established, one could formulate the problem of explicit construction of the discrete series characters. I think without this audio playing, my lecture would end very soon. 
there are uh, two ingredients to this problem. The first is a specification of the character on the regular subset of the compact carbon subgroup. This is the condition, well, that's, you'll see the condition in the next slide. This is the condition, the one, condition one. And the second ingredient is the continuation of this formula to other carbon subgroups to yield an invariant eigen distribution that is the appropriate behavior at infinity on the group, and that is condition two, which formulates that behavior. See, it's, uh, it's not reasonable to expect that if you specify the formula on it. We assume that for these characters, we assume that the group has a compact carton. So it is not reasonable to expect that if you know the formula on the compact carton, the group is a non-compact group, so there will be other non-compact carton subgroups. So if you know the formula on the compact carton, there is no reason to expect that you will be able to immediately see what it is on the non-compact carton subgroups. So Harishandra imposes this growth condition too, which later on, you know, it is called the condition of being tempered. Of course, it's also an invariant eigen distribution. Well, I said that uh, if you know the uh, distribution on the compact carton, it does not determine on other carton subgroups, but you already know a lot of examples. For example, the unitary principle series, all those distribution characters are zero on the compact carton. Okay, so uh, to get a unique extension, Harishadra imposes this growth condition, but that it only intensifies the mystery further because the unitary principle series are all zero on the compact carton, and they're also tempered distribution. So what is the single most crucial ingredient which plays a crucial role in this? So we will see it in the next screen. There is an audio screen here, which is not letting the mouse. Well, in the compact case, every, no, no, don't bother, please, don't bother, it's okay because that audio screen comes to the, it's uh, only when I turn it off it, I'm able to use the mouse here. In the compact case every element is conjugate to an element in the maximal torus so your continuation is no problem there and that's what Henman Weiss character formula does uh, it takes time I mean, it gives you the distribution well, I don't know whether you can see, so it's not clear. It says it's not clear how to extend to other cotton subgroups. It's very pale here. Yeah. What happened? Okay, so now you see those two conditions which were mentioned in the previous screen. Uh, so let P be a positive system of rules of G B and let uh, delta be the the well denominator function for the ambient group G. Suppose lambda is a regular integral element on the compact carton. Well the, sometimes I'm using the notation L and then B is a Lie algebra. That's real B there. What you see there is the real Lie algebra corresponding to the compact max, uh, compact carton subgroup. Okay, so let lambda be a non-single integral element. Then there exists a unique invariant eigen distribution theta lambda on the group G such that 
It is given by this formula on the compact compound. On the right side, what you see is uh, alternating sum over the value group of k with respect to b. And those psi lambda, or that should be at psi s lambda b, I think. The s is missing there. Psi s, alternating sum over the value group elements s in the comp of the compact carta. Epsilon s is a signature and psi s lambda, that is the formula. And then this growth condition on all of, all of the group G, which is a temperedness condition. So now, so I, in the, when discussing the previous screen, I said that all the uh, unitary principal series distribution characters are zero on the compact carton and also they are tempered. So there seems something is very mystifying here. So what is that? Well, in the case of this discrete series, the lambda is real on square root minus one b, whereas in the case of the unitary principal series, those Harishandra infinitesimal character parameter nu is imaginary on square root of minus one b. So that is the single ingredient which plays the crucial role in these assertions, unique extension, etc., etc. So the theorem one here is purely a theorem about distributions. It doesn't say anything about uh, representations yet. So given a lambda, uh, there exists an invariant eigen distribution with such and such properties. That's all it says. But the theorem which you see below is a complement to that theorem. For each lambda, the same lambda is thought with in theorem one, uh, there exists a discrete series representation, irreducible, that is, uh, well, something is called a discrete series if the matrix coefficients are irreducible, uh, matrix coefficients are square integrable. And the representation is, of course, unitary and irreducible. So there exists uh, a discrete class such that the distribution character of the discrete class is given by the Harishandra distribution in the theorem one, except for some, you have to be careful about this sign. Initially, Harishandra did not even expect, only in the, only late in the second discrete series paper in the ACTA in 1963, he was surprised. There is actually a single theta lambda. He expected that it will, discrete series characters will have distribution characters which are linear combinations of the theta lambda for the various lambda in the W, the ambient well group orbit. So and every discrete class is of this form, omega lambda, for some lambda. And omega lambda one is isomorphic to omega lambda two, if and only if the lambda one and lambda two are in the same WB orbit. Oh. Yeah, same WB orbit. Any questions? The construction and classification of discrete series representations by the distribution characters is a major achievement by Alexander in which all the down work was laid by him spanning over 20 years. The very brief view of Harishandra's deduction that a non-compact connected real semisimple D group G has a non-zero cusp form. I, I'm not. I'm not going to say uh, that I'm giving you an idea which is more or less the complete proof. Or anything. I'm not saying that. Just let me remind what the quotation from Langlands. It's uh, difficult to communicate the grounder of Harishandra's achievements and I'm not trying to do so, so. So G has a non-zero cusp form, if you will perfectly see what that means. 
if I'm running G as a compact cut and subgroup, this bear with me for my abrupt display of symbols without taking time to define them. Definition, what is a cusp form? So if you take a suitable function f, and if you take a parabolic subgroup q, uh, you integrate the function on cosec spaces of the unipotent radical of that parabolic subgroup. Well, there is, okay, there is also a, a normalization there. <clears throat> Here, uh, q is the parabolic subgroup, and it has a Langlands decomposition q equal to mc n1. So mc is the Levy part and n1 is the unipotent radical. So if all these integrals from all proper parabolics are zero for every coset of the unipotent radical for every proper parabolic subgroup, if these are zero, then you say that f is a cusp form. But even when it's not zero, even when it is not a cusp form, you still have a nice function on the Levy part by this integration. Orbital integral, uh, again, take a suitable function, for example, function with compact support, or you can take functions in the short space, short space of rapidly decreasing functions, the definition of rapidly decreasing function itself is very, very uh, delicate. You have to choose, how to, how to choose the correct functions to define which, so that it will be a very useful concept. So orbital integral, you restrict the function to the orbit of a semi-simple element and integrate, and there is a normalization. Averaging over k, suppose you take a function, then um, do the adjoint action by elements of the comp maximal compact k and average by integrating over k. So that is the average over k is. So the last screen I said that f is a cusp form if all those integrals are zero, but when you um, conjugate a, a test form using uh, inner conjugation by any element of the group, not necessarily maximal compact, that is again going to be a cusp form, so this averaging will be a cusp form if f is a cusp form, but we are not looking at cusp forms right now. Let L be a non-compact Cauton subgroup. Uh, choose a parabolic subgroup, proper parabolic subgroup, such that the Levy contains that non-compact Cauton subgroup. Yeah, so if L is a non-compact Cauton subgroup, there will always be uh, uh, a proper parabolic subgroup containing that, whose Levy contains that non-compact Cauton subgroup. So there is, Arishandra has this beautiful relationship between, okay, on the left side you have the orbital integral on the group G. On the right side what you see is an orbital integral for the Levy group. So he has this nice function here nice relationship. Uh, this has a uh, this has a um, an implication uh, so to say a corollary. So suppose f was a cusp form then as I mentioned this averaging is again a cusp form so this f bar q is going to be zero so the orbital integral is going to be zero so that means that uh, <coughs> The orbital integral of a cusp form is zero on, for any non-compact group, the radial elements of any non-compact group. That's what I'm saying here. If f is a cusp form, the right-hand side is zero, so the left-hand side is zero. 
will be the integral of the cusp form is zero on any non-compact cotton subgroup. But if suppose all the orbital integrals are zero, then the function will be zero if all the orbital integrals are zero. So one part of this statement that there are non-zero cusp forms if and only if there is a compact Cartan subgroup. So one way is proved now if there are if there is uh, if there is a non-zero cusp form then G has a compact Cartan subgroup that is true. For the other implication. A k finite z finite temper function is a cusp form. I mean, these are difficult to prove, but a k finite z finite temper function is a cusp form. But to prove this, Harish Chandra introduces the notion of the constant term of. Uh, a tempered function, so matrix, uh, uh, a tempered function which is tau spherical with values in a finite dimensional vector space on which the group compact group K has two actions, both of which commute, one on the left and the other on the right. So he introduces the notion of constant term and um, when it The constant term is going to be some function on, again, a similar function on the uh, Levy, but if we would not know that this, uh, the constant terms on the Levy or anything, we do not know much about that. If you can say, for example, that the k finite, z finite tempered function actually belongs to the short space, that's uh, that will immediately tell you that it is a cusp form. Immediately, meaning in the sense, Arishindra proves it's a cusp form. But even the introduction of even with the introduction of the constant term. Oh, you see, there is still a lot of analysis needed to conclude that it is a cusp form. Okay, so how do you get a k finite, z finite tempered function? Okay, you, when the group has compact and we are trying to prove that there are non zero cusp forms, you start with any one of these Harishandra's distributions, theta lambda which is an invariant eigen distribution given by a specific formula on the compact carton, which has uh, tempered growth. So if you take a k Fourier component of these characters, they will be k finite, z finite, tempered. And so there, there will be cusp forms. But if the cusp forms exist, we already know that. No, there will be cusp forms. So we wanted to prove that if G is a compact Cartan subgroup, there are non-zero cusp forms. Okay, so oh, this is I don't know where it is. I wanted to, when my lecture really sh should have ended in that screen, but because the audio didn't work in those few places the audio recording. I still have a few minutes, so I just I prepared this just in case I have some, some extra time. <clears throat> One of the things that Alexander proves is, okay, so if you take a cusp form on all the non-compact Cartan subgroups, the orbital integrals are zero, but he proves that the orbital integral on a compact Torus is actually extends as a smooth function to all of the compact Cartan subgroup. You will only 
which will be really smooth initially on the set of regular elements, but he shows that it actually extends as a smooth function to all of the compact Cartan set of the equation you see there, uh, that is, um, the case that there are two, there are two Cartan subgroups, one is L and the other is L1. The, the compact part of L is more and the, com, uh, the non-compact part of L1 is less compared to L. So just think of the case where if in the in the Lie algebra level, these two Cartan sub, subgroups are Lie algebras where if you if you do the compact plus vector part for those Lie algebras, the compact part for one of them will be of course I mentioned one in the compact part of the other one and the vector part of the other one will be of correlation one in the compact part of the first one. So he, he considers two such uh, Cartan subgroups. There is also an SL2, and when you, right, yeah, there is an SL2, and when you intersect one of the Cartan subgroups with the SL2, you get the circle group, and when you intersect the other Cartan with the SL2, you get the 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 vector group vector Cartan group the non-compact Cartan group of SL2 and the intersection of the the intersection of the two the intersection of the Cartan subgroup L and L1 is this is in the center of there are two um, well there is a three yeah as I said there is a three dimensional SL2 sitting there and you take the Lie algebra of SL2 plus Lie algebra of L, that is a reductive subalgebra. Similarly, take the uh, Lie algebra of the SL2 plus the Lie algebra of L1, that is again a reductive subalgebra. The center of this reductive subalgebra is the intersection of the two Cartan subalgebras. <coughs> So that is the way everything is fixed. So is, this equation which you see there, on one of them, where uh, the compact part is more, so that could, if you try to extend to uh, smoothly to over those, over a single, over a single point, it's only, you know it's smooth on the regular set, but if you try to extend it, you can only talk of the left derivative. That is what it is written there. The left derivative and the right derivative there. But he shows that this difference of the left derivative and right derivative is related to the derivative. The, you know, the these leaves, these L and L1 are so chosen that there is no singularity when you try to uh, extend smoothly using the other Cartan subgroup. You know, for this particular choice, and he shows that this equation. In the other one, there is uh, uh, the extend. The extension is possible without any singularity. In the other one, for that, for those points coming from the intersection with SL two, so you can he will conclude that the right side. So because the right side is zero, yeah. If the right side is zero, suppose the right side is zero. For example, that happens for uh, cusp forms. We saw, just just now saw that. For a cusp form, all the orbital integrals on any non-compact Cartan subgroup is zero. So the left derivative and right derivative coincide. Therefore, we can do smooth extension. So the, in this screen, okay, in this equation, we, what you see is that smooth extension. That f of l l is also the compact. So that is the let's say l is a compact. So we have a, the smooth extension on all of L. The other one, work pi L, is a product of vector fields on the torus, one corresponding to each uh, root, positive root of uh, yeah, every every positive. If you take a root and take the corresponding co-root, that gives rise to a vector field on the compact torus. Take the product of all those co-roots coming from all the positive roots. That is the differential operator on the torus over pi. 
Yes, so there is the, you you would have seen this kind of this formula or this type of formula for the compound in the case of compound group what Hermann Weyl the way Hermann Weyl went to prove his integration form his famous Hermann Weyl integration formula and then Hermann Weyl's character formula it goes through this step also uh, so Arishandra also gets the same equation for the non-compact case. If you evaluate the distribution character theta lambda on a short space function f, you get that, uh, well, okay, so all the smooth extension was Well, for a cusp form, I said smooth extension for a cusp form, but uh, this formula here, the distribution evaluated on a short space function uh, is equal to the Fourier transform on the, on the uh, torus. So remember that formula. So if you use that uh, if you take Fourier transform in that relation which you see there, then you get this formula, but here f is um, replaced by the right hand side of f for any element x of the group. Well, uh, this theta lambda here, this theta lambda, don't think of it as theta lambda applied to that function, but rather think of it as that Fourier transform itself. Well, then this formula is just, uh, yeah, that is that is the intermediate step. That is the step which you get when you apply Fourier transform, okay? But here, the summation is only over uh, regular elements because the summation is only over regular elements because this, uh, you know, this, this, this pi is unfortunately it looks the same. That one is a differential operator, whereas this one is uh, is a polynomial on the Cartan subalgebra, product of all the co roots. That's a polynomial here. So that is going to be uh, zero on if if a lambda is singular. So here you have only summation over regular elements. So this that's why you get um, you know. The district series only for only for uh, regular elements. Oh, shouldn't be there. Anyway, so some major contributions by uh, some major contributions by Harishandra may be singled out. Uh, this is this is uh, I found this in reading a, a, an article by Alma Borel. So the explicit determination of the partial measure for semi-simple groups, the determination of the discrete series representations, his results on Eisenstein series, and in the theory of automorphic forms, his philosophy of cusp forms, as he called it, as a guiding principle to have a common view of certain phenomena in the representation theory of reductive groups in a rather broad sense, including not only the real groups but periodic groups or groups or ideal rings. His scientific work being a syn synthesis of analysis, algebra, and geometry is still of a lasting influence. That is Alma Borel. Well, I said that my talk should begin and end with this remark of Langlands. So it's difficult to communicate the grandeur, and I have not attempted to do so. Okay, so thank you for that.